So today, we're gonna be inspired by a lovely little holly branch, which, you know, we're kind of going in between realism and more like kind of watercolory impressionism. Um, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna very lightly just draw the branch of the holly. We're not really gonna draw, you know, all the leaves in. We may just draw like a couple of them, but mostly we're gonna paint the leaves. And don't worry, we're gonna practice painting the leaves first before we actually start, you know, painting them on there. Um, so I have an H pencil, so a 2H, 6H, any H is really what uh, good for that. I'm probably gonna draw a little bit darker than y'all need to, just so that y'all can actually see what I'm drawing. Um, and then for the painting portion, I'm mostly gonna be using like round brushes, like this is a, a 10, an eight, and a two, just so I kind of have a a lot of different ranges. Sometimes though, you can do an entire painting with just one brush, as long as you use a variety of like tip to flat. And we'll go over that more once we get to there. So what I wanna look at first is how um, the holly branch is kind of at an angle. So it's kind of boring just to have it going straight up and down. So I'm not gonna fill my whole entire paper um, with the holly branch, just cause on one half, I'm gonna be doing practice with the leaves and then on the other side is gonna be my actual painting. So you could always just have a separate piece of paper though to practice on, but if you're trying to save on arches, sometimes it's good just to use, you know, half. <laughs> so I'm gonna do just like a slight angle and I'm drawing it much darker than y'all need to. So I have just like that and that's about how long I want my berries will be up here. And then very lightly, I'm just gonna kind of plan out where I'm gonna put some of the bigger leaves, but that's about it. Okay, and then next we'll start practicing paint. All right, so next what we're gonna do is gonna start practicing our leaves. So with our leaves, what we wanna do is we wanna prep some sap green, which sap green is essentially like a green, you know, kind of all the, it's not as bluey as viridian green. So I have my sap green right here. It's like got no bloom at all. Anymore. Right. <laughs> kind of depends on the brand though. Like my brand of sap green is pretty vibrant. It's yeah. not as olivey as I've seen some people's. Oh, it is. Mine's pretty olivey. Yep. Yeah, it's very spring green with a little bit of yellow on it. Oh. Huh. Too olive. Yeah. And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of blue to that one. So I have kind of more of a bluey green cause holly have like a little bit more bluey green what leaves. What color blue? Uh, ultramarine blue. Good question. And then I'm gonna take sap green and then also add some yellow. So I have a really light yellowy green. All right, and then I'm gonna have y'all pause your mixing. So I'll show y'all how we're gonna do it and then y'all can continue mixing. <laughs> so on a scrap piece of watercolor paper or on um, the other side of your arches, what I would do is with these leaves, we want them to be very light. And it's okay on your practice if they're not really light, you could always work on making them lighter. And what that means is my mixture, I want to have a lot of water to it and with these leaves, we're trying to make them very simplistic. So I'm gonna go from the tip of my brush to the flat of my brush. So I'm kind of pushing down, then I'm doing it on the other side. And then you have a... So, and this is all about pressure. So I'm going from the tip, flattening, Flattening. Now, if you want to be really fancy when you're doing this, you could try and leave like a little vein in there, but we can also do that in another layer on top. So, and you can practice this with all of your different leaves. You don't have to give it a tip. You know, it could also be a rounded leaf. 
And when I mean you kind of laying the brush flat, you're going from the tip where you're pressing very lightly and then you're pushing a little harder so you get kind of a wider brush stroke. What kind of brush do you have? Um, this one is a number eight. So now we're gonna take what we learned from our little practice and we're gonna start putting it on our actual painting. So I know you brought, can probably barely see where my branch is, but it's about right here. And basically what we're gonna be doing is working background to foreground where we're kind of doing the back leaves that are very, very light first. And then as they dry, we'll slowly start layering our darker leaves on top. So what I can do is I still have those two colors we mixed earlier. So the bluey green and kind of the yellowy green that I made from sap green. And what I can do is basically just start by painting just wet on dry, some nice big leaves. And then I can actually even take that same color, but with a little less water and just drop in a little bit for some variation. Now, if you get too hard of a line like that, you could always just use your brush and kind of drag it a little bit. But on these back ones, you don't want to mess with it too much because sometimes if I'm like, oh, I want to fix it, I want to fix it, then we end up kind of messing with the natural beauty of watercolor. So mostly I'm just kind of doing very light leaves. Like that. And as I'm painting this, this is why I didn't draw my leaves very much. I can kind of plan where I have a lot of open spaces or need more leaves. Typically odd numbers are always good. And I'm gonna have a mixture of like, some of these are gonna be a little bit more of a bluey green. And then some are gonna be more the yellowy green. Because they're kind of floating away from their branch. Yep. Because we'll connect them with um, kind of the branch part. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that same color we've been using for the leaves. And what I'm gonna do is use it to do another coat on some of my leaves. So not all of them. Some of them I want to be very, very light and be in the very back, but I wanna have a couple of them be a little more detailed. Like this one right here I'm basically going to fill half of it, then start on the other half and try and leave a tiny sliver for kind of like the middle of the leaf, like that. So, and sometimes if you can't get that middle line, we could also try and lift it out. So I'm doing one side. And then the other side. Ta -da. And while it's wet, I can also go in with like more blue and drop it in and you'll get a nice fun like wet on wet look. A little bleed, yeah. See, just a little blue. Mm -hmm. Add a bit of depth now with that same darker color and start overlapping some of my leaves. So this can be where I create another leaf on top and that'll help to push some of the others back a little bit. And also if you feel like you have too many empty spaces. Now, if you feel like you have a lot of leaves already and you don't really need any more, you could always just turn some of your lighter ones also darker. So, but I may even wanna do like maybe a little leaf that kind of curves a little bit. Mm, let's see. Hard part about this project is planning. <laughs> Think about where do I want to leave? Mm 
And then while it's wet, you can use like Payne's gray for a little drop in for some dark blue. Oh yeah. And what's fun too is like while one of your um, green petals are wet, if you add like a purple into it, it makes kind of a fun shadow if you do it wet on wet. Or even sometimes if you have a yellow that has a bit of white to it, it also adds a little more interest to your leaf. And then next we're gonna talk about the berries. And then next, now if your leaves are sopping wet, you may wanna blow dry them or give them a minute to dry. You know, you can practice more leaves before you do that. Um, but what we're gonna do next is our berries. Now with our berries, we do want some of them overlapping some of our leaves and some of them are gonna go in this empty space. So in order for my red to cover, red is actually a very saturated color. So if you have a really strong um, red, like let's say this cadmium red light, or it could be called like a vermilion. Um, if I use that with very little water, it is very, very saturated where it almost looks like acrylic. And what I can do is like fill the whole berry except for a little highlight, like a little curved highlight like that. Um, and then you can even use that same color if I want a berry overlapping a leaf just because it's so saturated and thick. Um, the other thing you could do is if you feel like, well, my berry's not really showing up, it's really dark, you could use like a flat brush and scumble a little bit where you want a berry to be. So kind of like lifting, ta-da. And then I'll put the red on top because then it'll go on a little bit better. And I want these to be very random, spread out, and then once that red is a little bit drier, then I'll use a darker red to do a little bit of a shadow underneath. Now this one, I may have to let dry a little bit more. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. So, and that's what we're gonna do. So next, once I have my berries fairly placed, you know, I can always add more if I want to, um, but next what I want to do is start adding in my stem on here. So for that, I want to use burnt sienna. And to make it a little more toned down, I love the mixture of burnt sienna and some purple because together it kind of like makes it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more pinky. Now, depending on what kind of purple you use depends on what kind of mix you're gonna use. So like this was a really warm purple, so I may wanna add a little bit of blue if I wanted it darker. And then what I'm gonna do is kind of point my brush like this. It's kind of hard to see on the camera, but I'm gonna point it like this, like a ballerina. And you're gonna go on your tippy toes and just to get, give it consistency, you know, don't even worry about following your drawing. You just wanna have a steady hand like that. So, and then from that, then I'll start creating uh, my little branches and little twigs that kind of connect to the berries. Um, and for darker areas, we'll use like Payne's Gray. But most of this you can kind of just do in like one color and then I'll go in and start, you know, putting a little branch here. Mm, let's see, little branch there, little berry branches. Okay. 
And right. just last thing I would do on here, of course, you could always keep working on it, do more and more layers. Um, but what's really fun and makes this look even looser is splattering. So to do, so to right? Like <laughs> I love that. But this is how I ruin my work right oh. here. This is the step. That's okay. <laughs> we gotta have fun with it. <laughs> so what you wanna do is you load your brush like this. Normally I use a big, bigger brush. If you use too small of one, you'll get itty bitty tiny splatters. Um, and you can splatter with whatever colors you want. Like you don't have to do red if it's too, you know, too much red with already with the berries. You could do blues, greens, that kind of thing. And a lot of times I'll flick and tap it in the middle. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get boop, splatter, splatter. Oh okay, that like the difference <laughs> this is this modeling right here. How ah. do you do that? Well, that's a lot of, you know, you can add a bit of water. This is like for background muddling. You know, you can add right. a bit of water and then splatter into the water. Oh, okay. And then that dries like in that muddling look. Yeah. Okay. So it just makes bigger puddles or you can spread it around. You know, it depends how loosey-goosey you want it to be. Um, and then like in the middle, it's really hard to remake where someone has muddled something like that. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> you never know if it's a mistake necessarily. Right. Um, but a lot of it's like kind of just wetting um, a big area and then kind of just dropping in a dark, okay. you know, and then it starts getting kind of that feel or even just glazing over it. Some areas you can see where there's a shadow. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just like a glaze, like underneath a berry, that kind of thing. I probably also splatter like some green. Ooh, yeah, gold would be I really like fun. I the gold and the sparkles. I use the, um, I have the mirror pen. Do you ever know that the silver and the gold look like the mirror? That's what we oh. used on the, on the um, nutcrackers. Okay. And I used it on the ornament ones I did last night. Oh, so cute. So the reflection, like where you left the little white open. And there you go.